Hello, YouTube. My name is Trey. Welcome to Working to Change. Today, we're going to be talking about Sean Altman. I wanted to watch other videos, but I couldn't. Sorry, I'm talking so fast. So, before we continue, if you want to like and subscribe at the end of this video, hey, please do. We're working our way towards a soundboard, a PC soundboard, not a $3,000 soundboard. You can help donate down here. We're always trying to make improvements here and try to make the set look better and sound better. All right, so let's get to this guy. So, I was going to make a video on him the other day, but I forgot. So... <laughs> This person was making a paid uh, paid partnership with Disney. So let's check them out. We're looking at the most iconic friend group, Disney's Mickey and Friends. And the character most like me is Minnie Mouse. And I have the most perfect dress to start the look. It even has little Mickeys on it. And I love how bold of a red it is. It's just like Minnie. I'm thinking of layering a fun collar like this one, just to give it a little more flair. But now I feel like mm. the dress needs more shape. So let's add this white petticoat under it. It's so fun to move in, and I love how it peeks out at the bottom. And to add even more shape, this belt should do the trick. Now for hair, I'm thinking of doing space buns. So let's pull out my hair donuts, and just like that, it kind of looks like I have mini ears. And Minnie wears gloves, so I need gloves. I'm also going to add this watch with Minnie and all her friends on it. It's so cute. But now, to be as bold as Minnie... I need a bold red lip. It's a classic and it's so pretty. Now let's add some black tights and pull out the iconic yellow pump. I'm just like Minnie Mouse. But wait, something's missing. I know. How could I forget? A giant red bow, the biggest fashion statement. And now the look is complete. I literally look like Minnie Mouse and I fit in perfectly with Mickey and his friends. The bow with the dress and the shoes really sealed the deal. Now I'm fashionable, bold, and fun, just like Minnie Mouse. Let's get dressed. Today, so I want to say this. I watch a lot of this individuals. And you know what? I used to be impressed with the followers, but I'm just not on TikTok. TikTok pushes certain people and we know what kind of people they push. So I'm not even impressed with that anymore. Um, but nonetheless, this is still quite a bit of uh, followers. I went and watched a bunch of this guy's videos. And you can see them as I'm going across with them. He does the same sound effect that... I know. Let's do this. Can I ask y'all a question? I'm just I'm just asking a simple question. And I'll let a couple of these play in the background while I'm talking. Let me ask y'all a simple question. Who do you think the audience is? If you're sitting around chilling, you're watching a video, and you're going, hey guys, what should I wear today? Oh, I know. I'll wear this. Mm, but it's missing something. Maybe I should wear this. Ah, that looks really nice. Hmm, we should wear this as well. And now I look like a princess. Who do you, what does that sound like to you? Does that sound like a conversation you're having with an adult? DJ, what did I tell you about keeping the donate? DJ! Who does it sound like they're having a conversation for? Because I know I have never spoken to someone like that. The only people I've ever spoken like that, or I've even, no, I've never spoken like that, but the only person I've ever heard speak like that is what kind of TV show is people? Right. Kid shows. Kid shows. Dora the Explorer is really uh, famous for doing it. Dora Explorer was so popular because she did stuff like that. Where are we going? <laughs> Wherever island. And the one thing she always used to do is where do you see the dragon? Do you see the dragon? Oop. Bam. There's the dragon. They space it out. They do all of that stuff. So when this person is going, what should I do? I know. Man, this is targeted towards kids. Thank you. Sounds like a cartoon for children. It sounds like something for kids. That's my problem. This is obviously targeted towards children. This is a grown man. And if you look at a lot of these pictures, these, a lot of these videos. And by the way, uh, another opinion. What, what's going on with the videos, man? What's going on with the videos? I swear I follow you. And I don't know if YouTube just doesn't recommend me to you, but uh, it's been a couple days now. But I, I get it. You're a truck driver. I'm just messing with you. Uh, but look at this. These are all... Like, look at this one right here. I can't show y'all. I'm pointing to it like an idiot. But this video right here, look at that. That looks like a sexy Easter bunny. What are we doing? 
There's another picture of him that's circling around, circulating around online. He's next to a little dollhouse and he's posing sexually. What does this teach the kids, man? Why would Disney want to partner with this individual who is a man dressing like a woman? In a lot of the photos, they can look very sexually provocative. Why do we need that as the representation? What's wrong with having a girl dressed like Mimi? Why not a woman doing that? That way, it's, first of all, seeing a lot less sexually provocative, right? I think if a girl did that same stuff, oh, I might be a little bit more okay with it. Not a girl, I mean a woman. But I'd be a little bit more okay with it. But I have a problem with a, it being a grown man who is dressing sexually doing this stuff. Now, if it was a woman who was looking sexual doing it, I'd have a problem with it. But it's it, this guy, and this is what I'm basing this off of, takes pictures that look sexually provocative. So I got an issue with it. Why can't we just have a woman? If you want to show off many, have a woman do it. A woman who is not trying to look sexual. Why can't we just do that? What, what's wrong with that today? I feel like all the time now is that we really want to push women out of the picture. Who do we have... When we had all those, uh, the whole drag queen story time, why do we need a grown man who drag queen is known as sex workers? Why do we need them reading to children? Why not just an average person? I'm okay with the man reading to children. I'm just not okay with a man who's known as a sex worker reading to children. Somebody who shakes his booty for money. I'm not cool with that. Why does it have to be a sex worker that reads to the children? Not only that, why does it be a sex worker that's a man reading to children? Not only that, why does it have to be a man who's a sex worker who dances in front of children to get money have to do it? Why does it have to be that? There's an agenda. There is always an agenda. And we know what that agenda is. To come after our children... And how do you do that, people? You break up the family. The more single women you get out there, <laughs> let's be honest, the more single women you have with children, the easier, the more likely you're going to have these kids going to these drag shows. You're going to have kids falling for these sexual things. Why is that? Because women are more emotionally driven. And how do these people tend to get to us? The drag queens of the world, the LGBTs of the world. Well, how do they get to us? They try to use emotion. They tell us a sad story about how hard their life was. They tell us a sad story about how this makes them feel more complete. They tell us a sad story about um, how this is the way the world was actually supposed to be. They always give us some sad, soppy story to make us just give in. And I'm not knocking women. I'm saying but men tend to be more logical about this and be like, hmm. When you even look at the statistics they show, what, who, what group, of, what demographic tends to be against the heterosexuals, more men than women, because we're not emotionally driven. Now, more men are coming to the side because what do we what do we do? What do we do to make men more emotional, guys? How do you make men more emotional? How do you make men become that way? You feminize them. What do we see today? What did they start? What did they start this off with? Toxic masculinity. And so men started becoming more feminine. And the more feminine men become, what do they tend to do? They start to be, they start dressing like this. They start to be more feminized. So what we see as feminine, right? And so the more men you can get to be feminine, even if it's a small section, the more men you get to become feminine, more emotional, start telling them that being masculine is a toxic trait. You shouldn't want to be all this. You should show more emotion. You should be more open to all of this stuff. And then guess what happens? This. This is the kind of men we get. And this is it. What do they tell you about these kind of men? Oh, uh, these men are better. Those men are better than us men. They're, they're, they're better than men who would be considered masculine. Right. And here's the discussion some people don't like. But I'm going to pull a Stephen A. Damn it, this is my show. <laughs> but honestly, what do we even see more of? And I, this is something I don't let the people get away with. Because if we don't call them trans, what do we call them? Gay. Gay. 
I refuse to do that. Because I'm tired of hearing, oh, he's gay because he's feminine. That's the problem. They even get the kids, they get the boys young then too. A little boy likes to play with one Barbie doll. Now we call them trans. But you know who fights against that now? The gays. I hate the gays. That sounds terrible. But people who are gay. I see gay men coming out and saying, the boy's not trans, he's gay. That's still a problem. Why are you calling him gay? If a, if a boy can be feminine, and even though I don't consider playing with dolls when you're three years old feminine, but let's say he does, that does not mean he's gay. Because if that is the case, then you're saying that gay equals feminine. But there are men that they call bears, men who are seen masculine, strong men that are gay. So then that, therefore, him playing with dolls doesn't make him gay if there's men who are gay who are not feminine. So that is a terrible argument. Stop putting labels on our young boys. I'm sick of it. He's not gay because he played with one Barbie doll. He played with a toy. He's not gay because he likes wearing pink sometimes. That's not gay. But they call him gay. And then they raise them gay. We see it all the time happen with women. As soon as they see a boy show even in an ounce of femininity because he's just a human being and some people tend to go one way or another depending on how they're raised, the mothers start to raise the boy gay. He's, the woman starts taking him to spas. The woman starts doing all this stuff. You know what the one thing the woman never does if they think the boy's gay? Put him around other men. Let him go hang out with some men. Let the young man go hang out with some men. But no, they tend to make the boy do feminine, more feminine stuff. They tend to start calling him gay. <sighs> I'm going to tell y'all a story. Sit back. Relax. Enjoy yourself. When I was a young man, <clears throat> we had a boy in our school. Raised mainly by his mother. Father never even seen the man. Raised by his mother. He's very feminine because he hangs out with other women. Obviously. My entire high school career, I talked to this young man. And you know one thing I never, ever called him? I still don't call him to this, to this day. I don't know what he is now because I don't speak to him. But I never at any point called him gay. Even though he acts super feminine. Everybody called him gay. He never called himself gay. Would you believe that? I never called him gay. He never called himself gay. You know who did call him gay? All the people who wanted him to be gay. Because he was feminine. That young man, I don't know what happened to him. I don't know if he's gay today. I don't know. But I had another friend. Same scenario. Acted very feminine. Everybody called him gay. I refuse to even say he acts gay. Because I don't even know what the heck that means to act gay. Because if there, once again, if there are men who are masculine and gay, then what does it mean to act gay? That doesn't make any sense logically. So anyway, the man, we were best friends. Never called him gay. He had a girlfriend. He did some things. At one point, he even acted like a girl to be best friends with the guy. Not physically. He did it over the phone. Still never called him gay because he didn't call himself gay. You know what happened to that young man? He finally came out of the closet and called himself gay. You know what he did? He blocked off everybody. Blocked me, blocked everybody, all his friends, disappeared off the planet. Two different scenarios. One man, I don't know what happened. One man, I know for sure what happened. Why do we think it helps people to say you're gay? Struggling with homosexuality doesn't mean that's who you have to be. Last story. There's another young man I knew. Played with Barbie dolls growing up. Acted very feminine. Spoke up for women growing up. Got called gay all the time. All the time. I never called this man gay. You know what? That man's married today. To a woman. 
living his life. That young man is me. That young man is me. I grew up playing with Barbie dolls, believe it or not. I grew up where people called me gay all the time. I was friends with girls growing up. My father was afraid I was going to be gay. He tried to keep me from hanging out with my sisters because I liked hanging out with my sisters. Me and my sister have an estranged relationship today because my father went out of his way to make sure me and my sister didn't hang out because we used to play Barbie dolls together. I have two, I have an older sister and I have a younger sister. Never, we, we have a relationship is dead because my father set in his mind that if I hung out with my sisters, I'd be gay. I had a girl who lived down my street that I used to hang out with. My father hated me hanging out with her because he thought I'd be gay. I'm gr I grew up <laughs> loving women, married a woman, never dated a guy, have never been sexually attracted to men. But everybody thought I was gay. I was called gay until I was 26 years old. Women, black women, there was a black woman who came up to me and she used to, I mean, I'm not even kidding y'all, every day for weeks on end. Because she, you know, she had ended up getting pregnant and leaving. But for about two, two, three months, she tried to convince me I was gay. Every day. She said, you sure you're not confused? You sure you're not gay? You sure you're not confused? You sure you're not gay? You sure you're not confused? Christian woman. Christian woman. Every day kept asking me if I was confused and if I was gay. Because all I ever said was, man, I wish some women wouldn't dress so provocatively. That's all I said. Didn't even push the agenda. Didn't care. Every day, because I said that, I got cold. I got told if I'm gay or not, because I just people take anything and everything to make they. It's like people want you to be gay. I know I'm pushing this super hard right now, but I just think it's a travesty that so many of our young men, because they're just a tad bit feminine, that they get thrust into the gay world. And then you got people who are saying people who are against trans people who say that they're gay. They're, they're not any better to me. Just because the little boy wants to play with some Barbie dolls doesn't mean he's either trans or gay. He could just be a straight boy who plays with dark Barbie dolls. It, it happens. Case in point, me. And because my mannerisms growing up as well, I was considered gay because my mannerisms we're a little bit more feminine than big brawly man. Even though I was a powerlifter, I was a football player. They still call me gay because of my mannerisms, because I didn't act super masculine. I was a sensitive boy. This just was is what it was. Was it was what it was. I was a mama's boy until I got older and then I became more of a daddy's boy. Right. But when I was young, I was sensitive. I cried a lot. I did a lot of stuff. I played football. I still powerlifted. But I was still seen as gay because I was just a little bit more feminine than the other boys. But I didn't let that happen. I never let it happen. I thank God for the people who didn't let me just fall into the trap of being gay. Because if that if I grew up today, guys, I don't know. There, easily they would have been calling me a female. They'd have been saying I was trans. And I would have never grew up the man I am today. All I'm saying, guys. If they're coming after our kids and when they get them young, they confuse the heck out of them. They confuse the heck out of them. And what they do is when they find a person like me, when I come and say, maybe he's not gay, maybe he's not trans, I get called a homophobe. I get called a transphobe. Even though I went through the same thing those little boys went through, they call me the transphobe and the homophobe. Even though I can connect with that. Been there, done that. They think I hate gay people. When it's the exact opposite. I don't treat gay people like they're different than me. If you struggle with homosexuality, I'm not going to treat you like this different world of a person. That there's me and then there's you. No, there's us. We're in this together. You me a struggle with homosexuality, I struggle with pornography. You struggle with homosexuality, I was doing drugs until I, until I wanted to take my own life. We're struggling with different things. That doesn't make us who we are. That doesn't make me a marijuana guy. That doesn't make me alcoholic. Uh, you know? It doesn't make me Nobody calls me alky. Nobody calls me alcoholic to my face. They don't say, hey, there's the alcoholic guy because I used to drink all the time. Nobody calls me porn guy. They don't call me anything. They just call me an addict or they just call me a human being. But as soon as somebody struggles with homosexuality, gay, lesbian, go get him a flag. Go make a part of a cult that don't care about him. 
They just want to validate him. And where has it gone? We started off with calling people gay, from gay to lesbian to bisexual to trans to a to asexual to demisexual to having a kink to having a fetish to dressing like dogs to dressing like cats to where people have sex with animals today. And there's a whole community for it. And y'all don't even know about it. Why? Because nobody cares. We just let people fall into whatever they want to and whatever they believe is what they believe and we let them we let that be their identity. I'm just done with it. I'm done with it. You're not going to convince me. You can call somebody gay all the time and you can hate me. I don't care. I'm never going to say that a person is going to struggle with homosexuality their entire life because I have a last story for you. I knew a young man <laughs> who grew up homosexual. What? Struggle with homosexuality entire life. You know, one day, this young man started going to church, started living his life. He said that he no longer believes that because he grew up struggling with homosexuality, that's who he had to be. He got married to a woman. That man taught me when I was 12 years old that I was not gay. It was at that moment, that same man who grew up struggling with homosexuality and eventually said, you know what, that doesn't have to be who, all who I am. Just because I struggle with it doesn't mean that's who I am. Gets married to a woman. Eventually teaches me when I'm 12 years old, when everybody's calling me gay, that that's not who you have to be. The people don't define you like that. And here I am today. It just goes to show you when people don't give in to the, uh, being conformed and just give in to complete control and then let people call them what they want to be, you go be yourself. If you struggle with homosexuality, cool. A lot of us struggle with a lot of stuff. It happens. Our environment shapes us. That doesn't mean that's who you have to be. You don't have to go join the rainbow gang. You don't. The rainbow doesn't represent that. The rainbow represents so much more than homosexuality. It does. So, I know I went off on a tangent there, but every one of my videos needs to make sense. And that's how I feel about this young man who's confused, dressing like Minnie, trying to portray himself to children. I'm sure at some point somebody was calling him gay all the way growing up until he believed it. And that's how you control people, people. You want to control somebody? Just get them to believe. One last thing. CIA agents believe this story you know one thing they used to do to mind to help control people get their mind controlled they used to take an apple pass it around 18 of the people were agents the 19th person was just an experiment didn't know what was going on they, they passed around an apple everybody called it a banana and so when it got to the 19th person what did they call this apple a banana why because everybody else called it an app everybody else called it a banana. So he called it a banana. That's all you have to do to control people. Just get them to believe. Just takes one step at a time. I'm out.